blah 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 blah. In my previous video, which was meant as a vlog slash rant on how much I think the upcoming Challenger decks are a great and desperately needed product, I ended by taking a swipe at MTG Finance, and I think that even though this was a vlog video and not a researched and scripted lesson, my closing comments were both unfair and uninformed. In fact, those comments are now my second biggest mistake slash regret in my entire channel's history. The truth is, is that MTG Finance is not a catch-all boogeyman, more or less responsible for high card prices, and I really am sorry that I characterized it as such, even jokingly. My comments were kind of asinine and definitely unfounded, and I'm sorry that they concluded a video that had really been one that I intended to be 100% positive. I was like, yeah, I get to do a Talarian wins where I'm cheering for something Wizards of the Coast did. Uh, Challenger deck go, but then I ended on that bad note. So I'd like to try and correct myself by taking some time to discuss just what MTG Finance really is, something that isn't too easy to do because MTG Finance is a large and diverse community. Yes, in that community, when we talk about MTG Finance, we do include people who do a lot of things that make me upset, things like buying out all copies of a card, being trade sharks, or taking advantage of others through trade. Of course, treating the Magic the Gathering game like a stock market and trying to manipulate that market. But MTG Finance also includes people who just want to track and understand the value of their cards. People who want to try and buy cards that are good value and be sure to sell cards before they lose value. When you decide to hold on to a card because you think that card will be worth more in a year or even two, you are participating in MTG Finance. And there's nothing wrong with that. In fact, I participate in MTG Finance in each of my videos, where I attempt to look at if a magic product is worth it financially. I ask questions such as, how much will these cards decrease in value now that they have been reprinted in this product? How much might they increase over time because they are played in modern decks? That's MTG Finance. It's a large term that encapsulates a lot of things. And it's an important, vitally important part of the game. I do not think all cards should be worthless. I do not think every player should spend, I don't know, $14.99 for a playset of each card in a set. Magic is a TCG, and that stands for trading card game. And the cards need some form of value in order to be worth trading for. In fact, in many, many of my videos, I criticize products and sets, not because cards are worth too much, but because they are worth too little. I end every booster box game by saying, buy singles. And this too is all part of MTG Finance. That's why I'm sincerely upset with myself for using the term in such a broad, catch-all, boogeyman way in Tuesday's video. It was wildly uninformed of me, a supposed man of letters, to not use words correctly. I like using words correctly. The Talarian Wins vlog slash rant videos are much less scripted and much more emotion-based than any of my other their work. And I don't mean that to excuse my error, simply to explain that while my is it worth it to buy a challenger deck video will be highly scripted, researched, and edited, Talarian Wins is a little more than me sitting down in front of the camera with an outline and just, well, going blah 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 blah. There truly is no shadowy council of evil MTG financiers who are unfairly determining how much cards go for. As many pointed out to me, players determine the price of cards by what they are willing to pay for them. But I do want to add that this doesn't mean I don't believe in accessibility and affordable cards. It's a game first. And while I love trading and buying and selling cards, and I think that's a critical aspect of the game, I do feel that when Chandra, Torch of Defiance is $40 each, when Modern Jund is, and this is true, $2,000 to buy the deck, because Liliana of the Veil is $120 card, then I am always, always going to respond with, that's too high. And I will always say that a card dropping overnight from $120 to $60 is no reason not 
to reprint it. If anything, it is the reason to reprint it. And I will say to the individuals complaining that they'll lose money on the Liliana they invested in, that magic needs to be a playable game first. But the key, of course, is the individual. That voice isn't all of MTG Finance. And I wish I had ended my video not by saying that the complaints about challenger decks were coming from MTG Finance as a whole, but rather from some individuals, a very small minority, who were more concerned with card prices than accessibility. To them, I wanted to stress that standard needs players, needs an on-ramp, and that by having a lively, vibrant, populated, populated standard environment, all ecosystems within Magic will thrive. No, I don't like buyouts or hoarders or people who try and manipulate the market, but I love trading Magic cards. I love buying and selling them, and I want MTG Finance to thrive because I want Magic the Gathering to thrive. I want stores to thrive. I want vendors at GPs to do great business, fairly and honestly, of course, which the vast, vast majority of them do. I want to be able to say that upcoming products and sets are worth it, and that does mean that the cards need to have value. But I also want to be able to say that the game is accessible, that it doesn't cost an arm and a leg to play, that teenagers can join us at FNM, that you don't need to be an engineer with a sizable, disposable income in order to play modern. The way to achieve this is not simple. The answers are not clear. It's complex, like most important things. But there is there's no straw man or boogeyman working against us in the community. There's jerks everywhere, but as a whole, there's a hell of a lot more of us as there are of them. In magic, at large, and within the MTG Finance community as well. But now I really want to hear from you. How do we have both things? Cards that are worth something, but not worth too much. What price should a modern deck be a standard deck? How do we determine that? Who determines that? Wizards of the Coast is who I feel needs to really be in charge of this, ensuring that we get reprints in a way that helps keep prices reasonable. And I've certainly been vocal that I don't think that they're doing it, but what do you feel is the right solution here? Let me know in the comments below. And this video is brought to you by my and many other people's local game store, Card Kingdom, a brick and mortar pillar of this community, as well as the Patreon support of viewers such as you. These are the people that keep Talarian Community College going and growing strong. So thank you.